Can you hear that guys? Absolute pristine silence. Such a rarity here in the UK. I can't even hear a plane. Well, we will at some stage. I'm here at John O'Gorn's Fishery in Hampshire. Two lake complex, fishing for trout. Gonna give it a go. I've got my workload out of the way. There's a little weather slot here. Well, it's summer, it's hot, it's still. I did want to catch on a dry fly, would have been nice. It's now quarter past 10 in the morning, I've just turned up. There's one other angler over there. Um, it looks pretty pristine and clear and beautiful here, lovely. And so peaceful, such a rarity. So I'm gonna enjoy the day, even if I don't catch a fish, and I'm sure, once I hopefully I will. But I may have to start with what's called a nymph. So for a nymph is a fly generally below the surface because what's going to happen here as it warms up insects down on the lake bed and in the weed beds will start to hatch out wiggle, wiggle all the way up to the surface hatch out and fly away into insects they might mate the same day or they might already be in the trees and come down as terrestrials but and they get on the surface of the water that's when the trout take them off the surface now it's kind of crazy you know what's the special you want to catch a trout well you can either fish with a dry fly on the top or a nymph on the bottom. I'm making the choice of a nymph first. I feel, because there's look, I'm looking across here, it's absolutely a sheet of glass. It's like a mirror, burnished steel mirror. It's beautiful. I've seen one or two fish moving around. It's not a big fish water. You know, trout to, I'm gonna say three pounds or so. They do get bigger ones, but it's not a real jumbo trout water, but nice fishery. It's not so much about the fish. It's how you fish and where you are, your environment. Okay, run through gear. I'm going to be starting just with my regular trout. So fly fishermen know this one is it's terrible, isn't it? I've fished with it for like 20 years, I still don't know what it is. It's called a pen gold medal. Graphite, nine feet, six long. It's two piece. It's, it's American one, number seven line. The reel is the same old, whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. I've picked up the wrong one and um, I normally fish with a different type of line, it's a bit easier for casting. This one's okay, doesn't really matter. Obviously, you can pay a lot of money for a fly line or you can get a cheap one. The most important thing on the second lake is it's got a tinge of colour in it, so you're fishing what we call blind, you can't see the fish. You're feeling for the take of the fish. Here, it's gene clear in this small lake here. So you absolutely can be looking for the rise of a fish or equally an individual fish. For that you need to be able to spot them. So you need a pair of these polarizing glasses. Don't worry about the fashion because these are prescription ones. I have to have them. And a long peak cap. This one is a Florida Guides cap, but because it's so hot and I've been out shark fishing recently, um, I got a bit burned in the sun. I, it's got a neck flap to it. Let's put that there so you can see it. Because people have asked about these. It's a very, very long peak. They use them in Florida on the flats. Flats is shallow water so that it shuts all the light down. You can see fish like bonefish and tarp and permit easier. Done lots of that. And this one has, as you can see at the back here, a detachable. You can take it off and just have it as a peak like this, or you can put on what we call the neck flap, which to be honest, is pretty cool. Literally on the back of your neck like this. It's out the way. It comes over your ears. You've got all those burnt, crusty ears. I already burnt all my lip out shark fishing. And I can put it there and beautiful. This long peak shuts that light down perfectly. And what some people do, they've got dark green there. They will even put black felt pen over it. So there you go. I'm all geared up here. I'm just gonna have a few casts and the fly I'm gonna be starting. I'm gonna call it like a, it's one of Sid Knight's. It's like a, a black ant thing. Let me show it to you. But I'll put it in the, oh, there's the first noise. There's the first plane. You've had the pristine two minutes early on. There, hopefully you can see the fly. A little varnished, quite hard head to make it sink a bit, and these wings on it. I'm gonna call it like a black ant. There's probably some scientific name for it. It's a fly, it sinks. So it's gonna come across as between a nymph and a fly. And hopefully we get a trout here. I breathe you 
Now, I'm not a non-stop trout fisherman. I don't do it all the time. I do it quite a few times. I have little phases of going through wanting to go trout fishing. But what I do like to do is strip some line off before I start fishing. First, five, ten yards. And then just like this, just put a bit of tension in it, just like this. Not too hard that you snap it, just to make it go limp. Because if I haven't been fly fishing for say a month or something like that, it's been in the tackle room, it's coiled up on here, it gets that memory, I mean a decent fly line, probably wouldn't have as much memory as a cheap one. I heard a fish then behind me, I don't expect you guys heard it on the microphone. Just take that memory out of it and you'll find that your first few casts, or most of your casts, will be a little bit more accurate and a little bit straighter. More for beginners, more for beginners. And the same applies to the leader, the leader for the beginners and the people that um, just enjoy watching a nice bit of fishing, peaceful surroundings. You have the fly line for your casting weight here and you have clear nylon or fluorocarbon, whichever you fancy, whatever your fashion changes, just regular five, six pound nylon to use and it's tied to the main thick fly line and I just give that just a just a gentle stretch and of course if it does snap you know now's the time to change it the other thing because there is going to be a what i call a surface film drag here there's no ripple on the water to help break the surface film of the line i get a bit of washing up liquid you can go in a tackle shop you can buy proper when i say proper this does the same job just smear a bit of washing up liquid years ago we used to use our own paste made up of washing up liquid and fuller's earth some stuff called fuller's earth it's made like a paste the problem i found was it makes the leader sink but it makes it sort of opaque and i think it might make it more visible for the fish we're just smearing this just cleans off the any bits of grease or anything you might have on there that might have uh, been there from a previous trip and just makes it sink i think we need to get fly in the water boys So when walking around in a clear water like this, when it's really, really hot and still and it's going to be pretty tough, you're looking for sort of a feature, but this feature I always consider in hot weather is going to be two things, shade and depth. The depth is going to be cooler for them, so it's water's heating up, they're going to be pretty lethargic, they'll be laying in the cooler waters where the springs come through to feed the lake. And the other one is any form of shade by an overhang, tree, a branch, bushes, anything like that. And I've already seen a static trout down here in water that's probably, I don't know, two feet, two feet more than the rest of the, the lake here. Just a little hole. There's one here and I see a darker patch over there. I'm just going to drop this fly straight over there and see if I can get a response. I'm either going to spook it or I'm going to hook it. I'll try and move this forward for you. I haven't got my big camera. Fish looks about be a rainbow about two and a half pounds so see what the response is probably, probably nothing that's why he's static there he goes that's gone behind him I'm gonna let it sink let it sink let it sink he's just down in that hole there it's gonna draw that nymph oh, I've got a piece of weed on it okay not a problem here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. <sighs> Mamma mia, he turned off it. But at least that tells me that fly I've got in, he is taking a look at. Going slightly on the edge there. See if I can... Oh, another one. Oh, another one came rocketing in. Okay, okay, now we've got a situation of what they call competitive feeding. 
one is definitely up for catching. This one, if I can get it right, one of these two is a catcher, I feel. Here he goes. And I see his mouth snapping like this, so I know he's taking nymphs down there. He's taking food. The first one I saw, the slow swimming static one, didn't take with the one that came off the edge of that bank and dropped into the pool. Definitely was a, was a feeding fish. Right, I've just walked down this corner and here is the exact situation I was talking about. There's a spring down there. It's at least another two feet deeper than this hole. I can see the gravel. There must be cold water coming in there. And I think there's several trout laying on station. Let's get down there and see if I can't. Yeah, I'll look. You see the fish rise? Just there. I'm going to put this as close as I dare here without spooking the fish. Yeah, they see the gravel down there. You guys might not be able to see it without polarizing glasses, but there's a light patch and that's stones, and the stones have been kept clear by the current coming in there. There's several fish laying there. Oh, oh dear. Oh my God. Now that wasn't a trout taking a fly. That was just a there are so many trout. This must be the main inflow, I guess, in or feed of this lake. I could be wrong. I've got my lead here. Right, well, I figure I'm going to get a, a chance to hook up here, people. The first few casts to get my length are going away from where the fish are. And then I'm going to tangle. Oh, there's another secondary patch over there. I just want to walk around here. I'm just taking my glasses off. Now you won't see them. You might see something move down there. I'm going to go around under this shade of this tree and maybe the camera will pick up the the trout that are laying there. Maybe if I leave it just there, you'll see down there that patch of gravel. 90% sure that's a spring coming in there. And they're there for the colder water because quite a few are laying static. If you can see them, I'm hoping you can. Just laying. A few cruising, a few static. So that's where the natural spring comes up. I'll move around again. See if I can get over the top. And there's, there's a secondary one over there. So this is what happens uh, when it's very, very hot. They're going to come off the main areas here and look for the colder water. My goodness me, there's one or two, three and a half to four pounders down there. It's absolutely... Look, guys, I've been doing trout fishing for 30 years. I don't think I've seen so many trout in such a confined area. There's a secondary spring here. Probably can't. I can't get up far enough. There. If I point to it. I keep dead still. Just down there. There are plenty of fish down there. Not all are going to be takers. Oh wow, that's a nice fish. I reckon there's some four pounders in there, people. There's a lot of fish there. I think where I am here, casting across. I've got a good chance for another pickup before I go and get that light rod. Look, even as a human, I enjoy the much cooler air of being in the shade here, under this tree. On a hot day, and it's only going to get hotter. No wonder the fish are here. Location is the key to all fishing, really. That's the truth. Right, I'm going to creep in there. I'm going to need a bit of a sideways cast. I'm going to go over there, mend the line, and I've got to go past it. There's one fish. Oh man, they're all over that fly. They're all over the fly. Go deeper. Tweaking, 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 tweaking. Here he comes. Oh, he turned off it. As I say, not all of those fish are going to be takers. Now, what I've done now is cast slightly on the weed over there, so it looks like a natural insect coming out off of the weed. I'm just going to tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. So I don't know exactly how deep that is there and how fast that fly is sinking. I may not be in their zone at all. You know, in other words, the fly could be the fly could be up here and you think you're level with the fish and in fact the fish are down deeper. You need to be on a level plane with them. 
I don't know why I'm talking quietly. There's only one other angler on the two lakes. Right, I am suitably uh, refurbed with sandwiches and a flask of lukewarm tea. I've now changed over to this light outfit, which is a four weight. I'm going to retain the use of that, uh, I could call it like a black ant fly. This rod is called, just so you know, we don't sell them, do we? Target Plus. This is like 30 years plus years old, you probably can't even buy them. This is only an eight foot one, okay? And it's a four weight. That's a, that's a line which are way, way lighter. The other one, if you recall, was a seven weight. This one is a buggy whip. Look, it takes nothing to bend this one. I did this once and snapped a rod, actually. There you go, this, has got, this one will bend when I catch a trout on it, if I catch a trout on it. It's fitted with snake rings, we'll run through those later. Snake guides, these are called snake guides. It's a regular butt ring there. A small reel floating line, this is called a, a Wickham's whatever, it's a very very small, what's that, three inch diameter one. This is called a fly in the armpit. Oh, ouch. So I'm going to go back there because I've been there and had something to eat, rested it for 20 minutes. No other anglers have come around here, luckily for me. I'm going to check in there again and I'll be very surprised if I don't get a take in about half a dozen casts, he says confidently. If not, I'm going to change fly. I'll tell you what I will do. I think I'll use a head cam. That way you're going to see the hookup better, I hope. You might even see a reaction to the fish. Now, listen, my net is just a freshwater one, but it's got a long extending pole. You can get proper folding trout nets. When I call it a proper folding trout net, it's not. It's just a folding net that you use for trout. You clip it to your hip. Oh, there's a man there. Hi, how are you? Have you caught anything? The thing is, it catches all, all on bits of brambles and stuff, so I quite like it this way. And I don't have to extend it, it's already extended. Very, very light to carry as well. Okay, I'm gonna park myself, put the fly in the water here. I'm gonna park myself in this little area again. That gives me clearance of this tree up here. Well, the other thing I do sometimes is this. Look. See where this open area is? I'll get my fly line, I've always stretched this get the leader out the end so you're on fly line. Get a bit of line out. Right, it's laying on the grass. I can do a cast out here straight away and I'm on the water. Quite handy for beginners. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. There are a lot of fish milling around in there. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh my God. Look at the difference you get. He's coming. He's going absolutely loopy. He's going absolutely loopy. Oh, I took it and blew it out. I barely, I barely felt that because I'm, because I'm doing a slow retrieve. I'm gonna to have to watch it. I might even have to use a, an indicator there. I'm gonna show you that I think. If I don't get a take like this, I'll try and put an indicator on. I'm going right across. I just don't think I'm deep enough. A few more casts, a little bit further over. I don't know whether you guys are going to see this or not the take. <clears throat> I'm trying to feel on my fingers here a pull of the fish taking the fly. I'm looking for a white flash of a mouth. I know I'm going to get one. And there he is. There he is. There he is, boys. I want to get him away from that spring area. There he is. <laughs> I had the feeling. Look at this rod bend, peeps. Look at this rod bend. Four weights. I mean, you can catch very big fish on a four weight. Your limit is when you're actually casting. The rod blank itself, the blank is not going to throw you such a long line in a windy condition. Hmm. Say no more. Try and keep pace with it. When he's coming towards me, coming towards me, keep pace with it. Then you load the pressure on again. You know he's going to go away. That's a nice rainbow. Let's just get down ready for him. Got the net ready. In hope, living in hope, people. 
it's like a buggy whip rod. And I particularly like this. I've got one that's even, even lighter. If I get this fish, do you know what? I'm tempted to go and get it. Really, really tempted to go and get it. And maybe even show you that bite indicator, they're going to call it. Sight bob, I think they call them in the, in the trouty world. Sight bob. I use them on reservoirs quite a bit. I don't really use them on these small waters. It's more for fishing a static fly. Wow, he's scrappy. He knows he's on the way to the dinner table. Rainbow, probably two and a half pounds, I'm guessing. And look at this setting, look at the setting here. It's beautiful. Right, now this is where you'll be careful with the four weight. Pulling back like this at a high angle. That's normally when you can break a rod. Got him. I'm going to show him to you. We don't, oh, that's a nice one, yeah. We don't do the banging on the head bit. People get really touchy. There's the little fly. That's the second time in the face, Graham. Just want to show you the colour in his cheek there. The colour in his cheek. Beautiful fish. Hey, this is a dinky little out for this. Very, very, very light. And pretty well balanced. Probably, if I turn it around that way, probably a composite reel instead of a metal reel will give you better balance because if you look if I, if I put my finger there to balance it it does get a little bit real heavy see you really want it balanced so when you're casting with the wrist for beginners you're not fighting the rod or and or the reel if you have a wrist like weightlifters no problem you can cast anything and beginners there's a little hook there so if you put in the fly in the cork there's a little ring, you can put your fly on like that. Keep it out of the way. Just pay attention on it and then you can walk around until you spot another fish or find another area that you want to fish into. I feel I want to walk over that area and have a look. The downside is I've got to lug this. I don't use my big camera so much for this, I want to stay mobile. I've got another camera I'm going to go and do some scenics with, which is a bigger one. But my big giant thing is a nightmare to carry around. It's enough just carrying this tripod lumbering it all around trying to get the shots and filming on my own all my films are uh, basically filming on my own I don't know if anybody else does that and they'd probably be aware of the amount of difficulty you get trying to make a fishing film catch the fish talk about it get the, everything right the shots the angles close-ups not quite as easy as you think now it looks like a very very shallow area over there now I don't think I've fished here at this time of year. I've normally come spring I say two months three months earlier and that's got a lighter green to it and uh, probably a very slight clarity improvement I don't see any fish now can you see if you look around here it's sort of generally generally a shallow area there's one fish over there keep dead still on the edge of the shine and the dark shadow oops been attacked by my own tripod just down there and he's coming right towards me this is a sort of spotting area that you give your right hand for, for bone fishing, stuff like that, the visual aspect of fly fishing. What I generally is do is try and pull my fly line and leave a little bit of weight of fly line. See it hanging there, the yellow? Hopefully you can see it against, what, that? So that weight is actually keeping the leader in your hand. You then hold the fly, not by the hook, and not up here because you could go through a bush and it'll pull that fly in your finger by the tail behind the bend that's what i do so here comes the trout just underneath me look 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 just down there and he is not even looking i just jiggle the fly a couple of times here he comes didn't even look at it but there you go you can see here how clear it is but not a lot of weed growth not a lot of insect life. There's another small fish there. But let's have a walk around and try and get the sun behind me looking this way. Because the sun's getting up, it's now 11.30. So I'm just walking slowly along here. If I keep dead still just scan, you can see there's no surface activity at all for dry fly fishing. 
Not to say one wouldn't come up, but I don't see any insect life coming off. I'm just going to walk along and I don't see any trout moving in this area, which tells me that area there is probably pretty warm water. In fact, I go so far as to say I cannot see one trout in the, this area. You've got to admit that is a pretty good setting. And of course, here they come. Clouds are bubbling up a bit humorous. Cumulus clouds bubbling up. Oh, somebody's going to, somebody's going to get in on oh, the auto cumulus nimbo stratus. You're wrong again. Okay, I'll call them cumulus fine weather clouds. Whatever. Half of them just pull up their information on Google, make out they know it. <laughs> we have to laugh. Right, before I put that sight indicator on, I'm going to come around, I'm going to throw a long line in there so that I keep my body outline, which I don't think they can see because I've got a tree backdrop. If I had just open plains, as it were, they're going to see the silhouette of me standing there. It'd be a bit more spooky, a bit more tricky to catch. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to the end here and take, throw a bit of a long line up there and see if I can't pick another fish off. But of course this time I won't be able to see anything. I'll absolutely have to feel them as I retrieve slowly. I'm waiting for that tiny tug where he snapped at the fly because they will blow it out as soon as they bite it they know it's an artificial Pew, it's gone we'll give it a go i've mentioned it before let's turn this camera around this way because the light's not great there that should be better get ourselves leveled up here let's get it sorted out for you people it's so easy if i had somebody to take photographs and do all the filming for me i could just go fishing and catch loads anywhere sea beach boat fresh water well you can do let's say you're here now I've located these fish, I've walked all the way around the other side, I haven't seen anything, so I know the honey pot's in this sort of area. <clears throat> you hook a trout, you hook maybe another one, you want to go and have lunch. The other anglers have heard your ratchet, your wheel going. Oh, I'll walk around there, you come back, there's an angler in your area. You can go to stealth mode with these reels, I've mentioned it before, very often do, especially on a big fish water, definitely do. You can just move the little ratchets and or take them off. If you want to have it absolutely quiet, and you could even reduce the sound of them. I can make this one go even louder. It sounds like a strangled parrot. If I just turn these down, we'll try that, see what noise we get. Don't pinch your fly line in the rim of the spool. Just slot it through. Oh, that's a, that's a lot quite out. So it's not that big squawk. And what I can do is take them right out don't lose them, don't lose them, Graham. I think we'll try it. But I definitely do it on a big fish water. I don't want that squawking ratchet going, telling everybody, hey, that guy over there just caught one. Let's move in him, let's just crush him, push him out. Set up again. Right, well, nothing on the... Uh longer cast in I missed two or three fish because they tug on the line and just barely move it and you've got a fish slow so I'm thinking a suspended fly I've got changed over I've got a different one here I'm going to suspend it I put a different leader on and these are the things strike indicators sight bobs whatever you call it it's like a piece of piece of foam and you just peel a section hopefully you guys can see this peel a section out dead simple you get a load in there and obviously like sticky back so let's say I want to fish that's all the depth I just peel off the back he says hopefully there we go now here we go put it in the middle there it's like a figure eight put it in the middle fold it around and it just sits there like a little float suspending that fly at whatever depth you want and you can actually move it up and down depending on how tight you squeeze this indicator on so this gentleman just moved around where I was fishing I think I mentioned that might happen and did so I got the brighter fly there but I'm going to cut some of that dressing off at the back there snip a little bit off so they don't, they don't nip at the back end of the dressing keep it short 
just try this one and that one is if you can see that there people I don't know what the best angle is sort of purple sparkle flash in it and we'll give it a try anyway well I'm going to move from here and uh, go over there under that shaded area and see if we can't get something over there well I've got my sight bulb on there or strike indicator and I've sort of got moved on from this spot it was a bit of peace and quiet everybody's got a fish obviously um, I'm going to walk around here and come in the opposite side of the lake and where I came in was some shaded area but the hot spot definitely is uh, in that corner I don't think the gentleman's seen the spring there or knows what the spring is so we're going to go and try it around here I'll move in where he was fishing and we'll try it and of course you can still retrieve this sight indicator slowly and as a beginner you will see it dip and the seconds it dips you should lift into the fish don't snatch don't heave the rod really hard see now there's a shaded area from this tree here all around this I'm going to walk really slowly now as I feel there will be a trout in and around this area slightly perhaps cooler water perhaps they feel safer who knows singing one two three I'll tell you what folks, I don't think that's far depth, about two or three feet and I've come off a stealth mode because obviously I was fishing over that side and even though I'm on a stealth mode people see your rod bent, hear the fish splash and uh, if you vacate the, vacate the premises they're going to be moving in. Strike, oh I had a strike indicator, watch it, watch it, watch it, it's gone, it's gone. I actually saw the, the strike indicator right under. That was pretty sweet, you know, so that fly, I come back in the deeper water. There's a nice deep hole here, I can bring him in. He came twice and there's another fish behind it, so that's competitive feeding. I mean, I may have caught it without the indicator, but I actually saw the indicator flash on. Brilliant. There's another fish following it. Do you know, I think the other fish is actually more interested in the strike indicator. The downside of the diameter of a small reel is you've got to do a lot of winds to get line back. Get that pressure on him. He's down there. Here he comes, here he comes. Wow, this one's a good scrapper. I think it's a sort of lighter coloured fish as well. Maybe, maybe you can see the strike indicator there on the top. Here he comes. Here he comes. In. Beautiful. Now that depth is a strike indicator here. There's the rainbow trout. And there's that purple coloured nymph that I didn't like. So there people, if you can see that, is my depth, which is there's the fly. There's a sight indicator, maybe 30 inches, that's all. But how long does it take my fly to get down there? 30 inches. This way I can let it sink to that depth, suspended here vertically by this, and then just drift around like this, all at the right depth. I think that's worth another shot and then I'm going to go on the dry. Now, classic situation for a sight indicator, because I cannot now see any individual fish. So casting across there, I can let a bow develop in the line. Like this would normally be difficult to feel a fish take on. Um, but I'm going to be able to see that sight indicator go down. If I don't take my eyes off it, I should see it go to underneath the water. Now, I, I quite fancy that corner back there again. Now with um, a four weight rod, there's a limit on how much line you can aerialise at one, at one go. It would then begin to collapse. So like, I'm going backwards and forwards like this. And I can tell you the optimum casting is about there. If I go a little bit farther, the weight of the fly line is going to be too heavy for the fly to punch it out. And I've got the drag of the sight indicator against any breeze or airflow. It's going to kill the cast. That's pushed me off target. I wanted to be up there. I 
I think these fish are just on the limit of this rod's range. That's better. Don't want that there. Right, there's the indicator, right out there. Just where the ring is, oh, I had a bump. Took it and spat it out, watch it gonna come again. I'll tweak the fly once. There's the indicator. He took it and spat it out. Let's try that one. What she indicated where I am, don't take your eyes off it. It's almost a bit like float fishing, I suppose. That's really, there's quite a few fish out in that deep area, out across that shadow. Do a little bit of figure eight in. They're slowly drawing that uh, sight indicator. Sight Bob Strike the Indicator, whatever they call them. There's a name up on the big reservoir at Rutland. What do they call it? They used to fish with a huge one up there. And I think they call it the Bung. Oh. Right underneath, guys. Right underneath me. Right underneath me. Here. Can you see trout down there? I can see them. Here he goes. Watch that flow. Here he goes. Oh, right past it. Down there he is, spooked. Look at the amazing clarity down here. All those pockets of gravel. Hopefully you can see some of that there. There's more and more, it's popping up as it gets hotter. This weed breaks off and pops up. It makes it difficult to hold your leader up. Trust me to look away and see the best trout of the day swim past. Well, I've altered my depth. I had a bit of a tangle, a loop just there. So I was actually fishing shallower than I thought, and I changed back to that first fly I caught on, which is more of a natural, which is called, let's put it in here for you, you have a look at it, it's called, I looked it up, it's one of Sid Knight's flies. It is called a flying black ant, and because it's got a black ant with tungsten head, it's got these little wings there, like ants, you know, the ants when they fly. But in this hot weather, maybe there might be a few of those finding their way onto the water. All theories, all fishermen have got theories all the time, that's why we're constantly fishing because we don't know it all. We think we do, but we don't. The fishing world is full of experts, or they think they're experts. And it's just when you think you've got it correct, it's all over. Oh, the gentleman's now moving. He's moving over there. If I could get back there, I might be able to show you a fish taking, pulling this under. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna switch cameras, people. I think that's what I'm gonna do, just switch the cameras. So it's going to be a bit tricky because I'm going to be using this camera and try and zoom in on the sight indicator and roughly in there, I hope. Let me just have a look. Focus up and then use the head cam as well. So I've just got to zoom in there where I think the sight indicator is going to be. I'm looking for pieces of weed in a good dark area. There's the indicator. Don't take your eyes off the indicator. I'm just letting it drift in. I think, I think I need to be a little bit deeper. I think this is the cast. This could be if that fly sink. Oh, got him, got him, got him. I hope he saw the float. Did you see that? Oh, he's off. He is off. I cannot believe it. How much bad luck was that? I'm going to leave this camera out of it now. I cannot look down this lens and fish. It's, it's like impossible. I'm going to run with the head cam. I'll get as close as I can and you should hopefully still be able to see the sight indicator if I keep my head cam dead, dead, dead still. Because I've had about six takes down the lens and I haven't been able to set up on them. Sight indicator's right down there. I need to go a little bit farther there. Draw it back. I want it to sink onto that gravel in amongst them. I keep dead still and you should be able to see it move if it moves. And this piece of scum I could do with moving as well. There's one looking at it. Oh, that was close. I think he bumped me. I think he bumped me. It's a big fish too. Let's get in there again. No, no, get him. This is what's happening, people. Look, I'll show you so you know. That's it. Game over. Rubbish. They are not taking anything. Change of fly. Oh, I had a bump then, boys. Got him, got him, got him, got him on the bump. Got him on it, got him on it. Hopefully you saw that go under. 
to get round the side. I did think it was only a matter of time for one did take. <laughs> Let's just hope we got it on camera for you. That was a, a fast take, but there's a big fish down there as well. Right, we're up here. Oh, he's taking it out. And I'm walking this. Sooner or later, I figured one would have to slip up. And that's what happened. What an absolutely exquisite day. There you can see the sight indicator, just about that going extra depth because of the depth I'm at. Do you think those trout are two feet? That's four feet at least. And there we go. Well, there is the sight indicator. What do they call it? A strike indicator because you strike, I suppose. Did you see that there? Just taped on. But look at the depth where I kept moving it and moving it and moving it. Look, strike indicator, I went from two feet or something this morning, look, three feet, four feet, that's about five feet to the fly, and I'm still not, still not near the bottom, and that shows you how this clear water is so deceptive in finding the fish, the right taking level. They are not coming miles to get the fly in hot weather. You've got to put it in their face, and there we go. A nice John O'Gaults. Nymph caught, rainbow trout, good condition, eats well. <clears throat> he doesn't eat well. I'm the one that's going to eat well. Probably on Mike's tea outdoors, I reckon we could put this on the barbecue. What do you think, boys? But I've seen that big one down there. It's every bit of five, six pounds. Watch the indicator. Here he comes. Watch the indicator. Watch the indicator. I'm just tweaking it. It's right there in amongst the weed. Got it. Oh, I missed him. But I'll tell you what I did get. That's right. Every fly fisherman's favourite friend. The tree. Oh joy. I only have one black ant left. I have now no black ant left and no sight indicator. Right, lunch over, I'm back in action. I switched this reel onto this rod, the ultralight buggy whip fly rod, it's about three. This is even shorter, it's seven feet long. It's called a lure flash viper. That oh, sounds cool, doesn't it? I've had it about 30, 40 years. I've tied the leader shorter. Here, if you can see it. So I'm just going to switch, and I've got this fly. I put it on here. This is another one of Sid's. It is popularized on the Tolly Olson fishing show and called the Pearly Daddy. The reason I'm using that, this is a too big a fly for this rod if I was distance casting it, but I'm just down the margins here. But I figure these fibers moving might just kick one trout into snapping at it. So that's the reason I'm trying it. We give it a go. I was going to go and get a dry fly and have a go with the dry fly. You can see in the background, other than fish jumping, jumping, not taking flies, nothing's happening. So we might, might get you guys a hook up to camera. Who knows? I've got to see how fast it sinks first. I'm going to virtually be getting in there with them. Oh, I can't go in much closer. I'll be down there. Okay, flies sinking, sinking, sinking. Oh man, they like the look of that. They turn twice on it. It's those legs. I'll just give it a little tweak. Here he comes. Come on. I just had a feeling those legs were going to do it. I just had a feeling, people. I just had a feeling. They're made of a secret material. Sid makes them for a secret. Don't tell anybody what I make those legs out of because they're very durable. 
and do you know what? <laughs> I put the fry down there, two, tr two trout's head turned straight away when you just give it a little baby tweak. And look at this rod, no problem at all, no problem with it. Yeah. I hope that camera was on for that one. He's got me in the wee, got me in the wee, come out. Come on fish, here he comes. Here he comes. He's in. Is there anyone anything to say? Come to tea. A little tip for hot weather, trout fishing. A load of trout in front of me. I can't possibly get a fly to them really, so you can use a catapult or pin cast. Just hold the fly between your thumb and forefinger on the shank, flex the rod, ping, out it goes. The catapult cast, the pin cast. It then sinks right in amongst where the trout are. When it gets to a predetermined depth or wherever you fancy it, just give it a little jiggle and see if those fish will take. just put you in the zone of where the fish are. Just try and let the small ones blow it out and leave it in position for a bigger one. Got one. Got one on. Got one on, boy. Got one on. Vertical fly fishing. I love it. So you could be out there casting all over. Missed the jump then. Little lightweight, three weight, four weight rod. Just like this, and you can catch good sized trout. Get a good scrap. Wow, that one was going. What a scrap. Out here, nothing. In close where the cool water is, place to go. Come on fish, come on. What a scrapper. What a scrapper. Too late, he swam the wrong way. And there we go, vertical fly fishing. Banged on the head, ready for the frying pan. There's the fly. There's the fly, pearly daddy fly. Fly of the year for me, I think that. And there is a rainbow trout, otherwise known as Dindins. Barbecue at Totally Awesome Outdoors. Here we come. Well, I've had a great time here. Caught some good fish. Really pleased with some of the techniques. Hopefully you guys have seen it. Maybe a few of you beginners have learned something there. Might get you that extra fish or two. And listen, tips are what it's all about, not tackle. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Watch both channels, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. Hit those subscribe buttons on both. And I'll tell you what, this hat has been absolutely superb for keeping me cool today. We'll see you next time. Who knows where it'll be? Boat, bank, beach, river. We'll be there somewhere. See you again. <laughs>